People who work or play in extreme conditions don't always care about bezel size, chrome accents, and chamfered edges. They want a phone that'll work even when it's being kicked and dropped and smashed to pieces, or when it's being subjected to the occasional downpour. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is the rugged Kyocera Torque for Sprint. Let's take a look inside the box and then have a look at the hardware of this beast of a phone. So starting with the box here, normally I would give Sprint some bunk for its uh, beyond minimalistic packaging here, but Sprint has made a big point of being 100% recyclable and very green for uh, for quite some time now. So we got to give them some kudos for that. Not much going on on the box as a result. We just have the printed image of the device itself alongside some callouts for 4G LTE capability and Sprint Direct Connect built in, which we will talk about. Some barcodes on the side there, a little QR code and uh, some text that is not terribly legible because of its low contrast ratio, so we're going to go ahead and ignore that and just go ahead and get inside the box. Popping the box open, we can see the device revealed front and center in a special cardboard cradle. We're going to take it out and uh, give it a little heft, and then we'll put it right alongside so we can get to the rest of the box. Not expecting much inside here, and uh, probably not going to be surprised. Some getting started guides bundled together. The recycling pouch, you can send your old phone back to Sprint if you like. Got a wall wart there for the USB cable, and there is that USB cable right down below. Getting all the packaging out of the way, we can finally come back to the device. The Kyocera Torque appears to be every bit the rugged device its builders claim. Uh, it is 156 grams in weight, so it's actually a little lighter than we expected, but it is uh, still heavier than something like a Galaxy S3, uh, substantially lighter than something like a Nokia Lumia 920. Obviously brings a lot more ruggedness to the uh, portfolio with military standard 810G and IP67 uh, ratings, which we'll explain further in our uh, full review. But the, uh, there's also, as you'll notice here, there's no earpiece along the top of the device. As we saw in our hands-on from MW MWC, this is a tissue conduction technology that allows the earpiece to function without the use of any holes, any kind of uh, break in the glass up there, which is fascinating and offers some practical conveniences as well. There are some sacrifices that have been made for, to make this a durable phone, as we've talked about on other durable phones before. See, this is a 4-inch display, a little smaller than we're used to, and it is at 800 by 480 resolution, so it's not going to please any resolution enthusiasts out there. The camera on the back is also a 5-megapixel shooter, so there are some compromises being made here, but uh, let's just take a hardware tour and see what's up. Android home button, menu key, and back button are physical keys, not touch keys. Good feedback and responsiveness from those, as well as the volume rocker and the Sprint Nextel Direct Connect button called out in yellow on the left here. This device uses Direct Connect on the CDMA network, not on the IDEN network that old Nextel phones used. Dedicated hammer, uh, camera button on the right-hand side. Coming around the back, we can see some charging ports above the uh, gasket lock there. This is familiar to us from other devices. You could just get a screwdriver or a dime, a coin in there, turn it and lock it in position to lock down the back on a gasket and keep water out, part of the immersion rating. Up top, we have some additional buttons. In addition to the power standby button familiar to Android, there's the speakerphone toggle familiar to Nextel users of old. It allows you to turn the speakerphone on and off in walkie-talkie and phone calls. And there's the headphone jack also covered with a protective gasket. Let's see if we can go ahead and pull the screen protector off here. Screen protector comes off there, and we have access to that display. The battery is already installed, so I'm going to go ahead and power on this device for our first boot to close out our video. And while it does power on, I will tell you this is Android Ice Cream Sandwich running here, not because Kyocera didn't want to put Jelly Bean on, but because Sprint has not yet made uh, the CDMA-based Direct Connect technology compatible with Android Jelly Bean. And there is our lock screen, preparing SD card, and we're checking for a firmware update there. We can see we don't have much battery power to work with. So our boot up is complete. The device is downloading a new firmware package. It is also talking to the network to enable that Direct Connect functionality. We will cover all of this, the software features, even more of the hardware. We're going to put this phone through its paces. Stay tuned for comparison videos and our quick review treatment. But for now, just an unboxing and quick look of the Kyocera Torque for Sprint. This is just the first in a series of videos covering the Kyocera Torque for Sprint. Follow us on all the usual channels. Subscribe in the usual manner so you don't miss it. We've got comparisons and our quick review coming up. Till then, I'm Michael with Pocket Now. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.